Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of JNP Cycle. I'm Joshua. I'm Charlie. And uh, today we are going to be reviewing a XR200 versus a CRF230. Now, uh, the last year of production for the 200 was in 2002. The last year, or the first year of production for the 230 was in 2003. Um, this is actually an 03 and this is actually a 2000. So um, both have the Honda Red after the year 2000. Um, I've owned several of these bikes and uh, we're going to go over uh, a few things. So first off, comfort. Um, the XR200 is far more comfortable, um, easily wins the seat on this bike, and the suspension is a lot stiffer on the 230, so it's a little bit more competitive, but it, honestly the bike just does not have enough gift for my liking. Um, but this is way easier to get on and off of, and it's got an electric start. Talk to the camera, you gotta speak up. I say it's way easier to get on and off of, and it has an electric start. Yeah. Now, the electric start on the 230, when it works well, is fantastic. We've had 230s that do not want to start. You can't get them to start. They have no interest in starting, and then it's the worst thing in the world, and I would take the kickstart over that any day. I do believe if you jet this up a little higher, it's easier to start it. This one here actually starts right up. Go ahead, fire it up. Fire it up. So relatively easy to start this bike. Um, it's a little cold blooded like any of the 230s, but it actually starts up pretty easy. Um, I've only had two. I think we probably owned like six or seven of these, and I think out of the seven we've had, maybe two of them have started easy. The 200, easy to start. Um, so as long as the 230 starts easy, obviously if you turn key and hit the button, that's easier than kickstarting, but I, I don't see the problem with the kickstart on the, the 200 for me. Um, as far as fun goes, the, the 200 is, is a bit more torquey and it has one less gear. Um, this bike here is uh, six gears, so you, you get a little more power. Um, the pistons on both of these bikes are actually the same exact size. They are 65.5 millimeters. Uh, the only difference is the stroke is longer on the 230. That's where you get your extra power from. Um, maintenance wise, uh, changing the oil, um, taking care of the brakes. Obviously this has a disc brake up front, so that's a lot better for stopping. Uh, than this bike, but if you have new brakes on the 200, it stops pretty decent for what you're doing. Um, again, they're both trail uh, trail bikes, entry level, um, easy to ride for anybody who's new to it. This, this one, this particular one, they have a street kit on there. It has the turn signals, and the turn signals in the back, brake light, yeah, and headlight. It's uh, street legal. You yeah, can actually take this on the road. Yeah, it's titled, so. Uh, so ready to ride on the street, which is cool. Um, it's got a speedometer. Yeah, it has a speedometer. And a thing off of a 250 or a 200, depending on the year. And I'll show you guys that here in a minute. But uh, the, uh, I guess the the biggest thing for me is um, the parts cost so much less money on the the 230. So your motor to rebuild it, if you're gonna just do the cheapest rebuild to get it back on the trail, it's like 50 bucks. You get a new cylinder, new piston, new circ clips, uh, new rings, and a gasket kit, $50. I mean, you can't beat that. Now for the 200, it's 15 bucks for the gasket kit. Your piston's about $40. As long as your cylinder's okay, your cost is about $20 more roughly. Um, if but if your cylinder is bad, bad it's going to be four or five hundred dollars to get a new cylinder um, or you're going to have to get it bored which i don't ever like to bore a cylinder i like the stock size it's more more integrity when you leave it stock so personally i, I if you're going to be fixing something up or you, you see one online that's cheaper the 230 is a good buy um, because it's 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 a reasonably priced bike to purchase usually and I mean, you usually see these 200s, at least where we live, for like around 2,000. The 230s right now are going for about three. So, I mean, if you got one for 2,500, you know, that's a decent deal. I don't know if I'd pay three grand for a 230, probably not. Um, I'd be happy at two grand on the 200. This one would be worth three with the street kit and all the extras. Yeah. It has a lot of bells and whistles. I, I think it it's a, worth about three. It has an updated, upgraded shock. 
that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. The suspension um, stock on the 230, not that great. Um, the front forks are stock on this bike, but what they did is they took a 1986 all the way to 91 XR200 rear shock and put it on this bike. So it's actually a lot better competitively. And I'll grab the camera and kind of show you guys uh, what, what they did here. When we went to pick this up, uh, I was not expecting to see uh, that. And uh, when we got there, you know, the guy had um, put the better shock on and, um, you know, I mean, the plastics are a little abused on this bike, but I mean, honestly, uh, pretty solid machine. Can't really beat the, uh, the price. Okay, so he mounted the rear canister here. Um, for the for the shock which is honestly a, a pretty good spot for it um, I have no complaints on that plus you have a lot better suspension with this 86 or uh, 89 rear shock this is a, a nice upgrade for this bike um, the rear shock on this stock is pretty bad just like the, the other one um, no, the starters nice you have got some bark busters on here this is that um, speedometer my grandpa is talking about these in like nice condition on uh, eBay are going for like $2,000, which is nuts. Um, so if you ever find one on a bike and you want to add it to yours, um, that is the way to go. There's no way I'd pay two grand for that. Um, but the uh, the 200s, as they got newer, they, they stripped all the nice parts like the speedometer and the better suspension, and they gave you this yellow shock, which honestly, this bike here, this is the best shape I've ever seen this yellow a yellow shock be um, on, a, on a 92 and up um, XR. It's fantastic. Um, and that goes for the purple the purple um, shocks uh, springs and that goes for the yellow springs as well it's the same yeah, this is a low same hour shock body here it is a low hour low hour bike for sure this bike here is pretty clean i think it sat for a very long time i mean i i've never owned one that had the stickers on the back um so that was pretty crazy when i seen that i was like wow this is pretty low hour so but yeah sweet little bikes um if I had to pick between the two, I would go with the XR200 because um, it's more comfortable. The suspension is definitely lacking in this case. Um, if you're going to talk stock 230 versus stock 200, I'd go with the 200. It's more comfortable for sure, and the shocks are more forgiving. The 230 always seemed too stiff for me, um, and I just didn't have as much fun driving it. I, I thought the torque on the 200 just was more fun in the woods. I'd rather go. Uh, fast on a slow bike than you know slow on a fast bike and the 230 is a, a faster built bike um, it, it does go faster it is nice when you want to go putts on the road though because you have that sixth gear that's the only thing the 200 motor doesn't have is it doesn't have that uh, sixth gear which I think is uh, great um, aside from that um, they're both still fun trail bikes they're both entry level um, and uh, you know it's a, they're both a good buy just make sure you take a look at the oil check the check the wheel bearings grab the wheel see if it pulls side to side you know and uh if that's if that's good then you don't have to mess with that and uh it'll save you some time and effort but really bulletproof both bikes i wouldn't shy away from either of them as long as the oil looks decent just pull the stick out and take a look at it ask when the last change was done um, look it over climb underneath of it look at the frame rails look at the bottom of the motor make sure there isn't a bunch of oil pouring out of the side of it um, and really you should have a solid bike so yeah that's the xr 200 versus the 230 pap which bike would you pick if you had to buy one well i would pick the 230 only because it's electric start and it's easier to get on and off of but uh, this now, one here is really 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 a nice one now what's different about this 230 that makes it easier to get on and off of they put a low ring link on this bike. They put, a low, they, were low, they put a low ring link on this shock when they put it on here. Yeah, so they added this low ring link here, which is uh, whatever that is. So and uh, it drops about, it down, I'd say, a good inch and a half at least. Inch and a half, yeah. yeah, so I mean, Maybe two. this would sit a, a little taller than the 200 stock. So I mean, the low ring link certainly helps if you're looking for something that's lower to the ground. And they shaved the seat, which is uh, another thing. They shaved that seat down too. So. That's it. That's it. All right, guys. That's a wrap. Well, thanks for tuning in for another video. We appreciate your time and your viewership, and we hope you have a wonderful day. See you again soon. All right. Toodaloo.